you did get uh, an important 3-1 win over Wellington across the Dutch over there, but I think Curtis Good had to come off early in that game, replaced by Nuno Reyes. So before we get to anything else, what's the health and fitness of your squad? Is Curtis able to back up, or is he going to miss it again? Well, I think he had a cork bleeding in her in his uh, hamstring, and um, you know he trained a little bit yesterday. Um, so we'll see how he goes today. If he can um, uh, complete the training session today, he should be okay for the selection. Um, everyone else is okay. Um, we have no problems. Everyone is healthy. Uh, we only have one, uh, I think, one young player who is uh, still uh, modified. All, all others are ready to go. So, you know, this is probably the best uh, situation we've been this season where everyone is uh, putting ha their hands up for the game time. And Tom Glover, he, was, he made some really remarkable saves against the Phoenix, and it really seems like. Well, it could have been very easy for him to go off the boil and to get into his head after what happened at the derby, but he seems to have done the reverse. He seems to be performing really well. Uh, what's, you know, how, how is he doing it, basically? Is it yourself? Is it the coaching staff? Is it goalkeeping coach getting around him, or is this just Tom's own mindset coming through? I think a little bit of everything. I, I, I think we got fantastic uh, group of players around him with a lot of experience. You know, we got someone like Lecky, you got someone like Jamie, you know, you got someone like uh, Curtis Good, you know, nearest to him. Um, you know, there there are a lot of people with a lot of experience, and you know, some of them are really relaxed about the, everything that's happening. Um, you know, Mike is fantastic coach and, and he has changed a lot of uh, Tom's behaviours and a lot of the way Tom behaves uh, uh, in the games and at the training sessions. And I think it's a bit, bit also a little bit of maturity, you know, he's getting more mature and, and I think his decision making has been fantastic. Um, you know, mistakes, I mean, everyone's going to make mistakes and, and you know, you slip and it's, it's unfortunate that something like that happens. but. You know, he he was calm. He he reacted. You know, as the way we we want him to react. Um, and you know, after that incident with the bucket, I think he's been fantastic, and uh, you know, he's been he's been excellent. So it, it just doesn't look like there has been any uh, any long term damage done. You know, maybe it was something short term, but uh, long term he is uh, fantastic now. Because even before the derby, Tom, his form had really improved from last season. He made some mistakes, he was a bit erratic, but this season he's looking a lot more sh assured at the back. He's making less mistakes. How much of an impact has uh, Mike had on Tom since he arrived at the club uh, this season? Look, I, I can't tell you, you know, what is the difference in methodology, you know, what uh, the previous coaches did with him and, and what... But now I can tell you that that Mike is a fantastic goalkeeping coach. Um, he is uh, very, very much hands-on, and all our goalkeepers love working with Mike. Um, he's, uh, you know, inspirational for them, great influence for them, um, and uh, you know they are all responding to, to, you know, to his methodology, to his way of thinking, to his way of working. Um, and you know, with, with Tom, we can see like he's been in form of his life, which is which is fantastic, and that's what we need at the moment. Hey, Rado, um, just to comment on Florian Berengue's return. I mean, he obviously has been out all year with the hamstring injury, but how important is he coming back into the team? And um, is he ready to sort of play a full ninety, or are you planning just to slowly integrate him in as he comes back from the injury? Yeah, look, he is, uh, you know, he's way away from playing full 90. He hardly played any game this so far in this season. You know, so he is fully fit now. He's been training with us. Uh, he spent a lot of time in the gym and strengthening uh, those, that area and, and also not just that area, but all, all other muscles around, you know, that may be, may be exposed to different type of, uh, you know, game situations and you know so, so he is ready from that point of view now we just need to slowly integrate him um, into the you know the, the starting lineup and that, that may take a little bit of time 
And Rado, just as well, Aidan O'Neill this season obviously has had a really solid start to the campaign. Uh, just a comment on how important he is to the team and I guess just seeing how he's progressed throughout the season and, and what sort of ceiling does he have? You know, how much better can he get with his overall game? Look, uh, you know, when you play with 1-6, uh, then it is so important that that 1-6 can do a job for two players. And, and at the moment, Aiden is doing that. He's covering, you know, left side, right side. You know, he's always in, in the right uh, position from defensive point of view. But, you know, for us, even more important, he, he's contributing a lot from, from attacking point of view. You know, um, he's got a freedom to go and, and join the attack. Uh, which we, we saw against Melbourne Victory when, when, when he contributed with a goal. Um, and, uh, you know, he is a very, very important part of, uh, you know, our past and, and, and us going forward. Uh, the ceiling, you know, you never know, you know, it's, uh, f for us, he is a very, very important part of, uh, you know, our play. Uh, what does future... Uh, um, look for him regarding the national team, you know, regarding uh, uh, overseas trips, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to predict, you know, there's other people need to judge him, but we, we rate him highly, we, we hope that he stays with us for, for many, many years. Hey Rado, on Jamie McLaren, um, I was obviously had a great season, scoring each week, closing in on Bessart's record, you know, you were the one who found Bessart over in, uh, over in Germany back in the day. Um, what um, do you think, sort of how long can Melbourne City hold on to him? Do you, do you think he'll end, he'll end up going back overseas? I look, uh, same as, as every other player that we've got right now. Of course, we, we want to help some of the younger players to be moved on and, and you know, go and find uh, uh, a good club overseas and maybe uh, make some money on, on their sale but you know when it comes to to Jamie when it comes to some of our very much key players our marquee players of course we would like to keep them for as long as possible I mean Jamie is still very young um, you know regardless of where he's playing he is making the national team he's scoring goals for us you know he is living in his hometown you know he is in, on top of his game um, I, I hope that he stays uh, I hope that he stays for many, many years to come. But you, in football, you never know. You know, it's uh, you know what, what he what he wants, and you know if some some good offer comes for him, then that will be you know time for to sit down and, and talk about that. But at the moment, I think he's having you know one of the best times in his life, and you know scoring goals, chasing the records. You know, I don't think that uh, he is really thinking to go, especially not, not now in January. Righto, you've um, obviously, you've been in clubs where Bessart's been, now with Jamie as well. Um, different, different, different players, but you know, just great like goal scorers. What are the similarities that you see between them in terms of their attitude, in terms of their sort of, you know, I guess, uh, the way they play? Uh, look like, uh, you know, both uh, uh, Jamie and, and Bessart were very, are very good in, in pressing, you know, one man pressing machine as we, we kind of asked them to do. Uh, and uh, both of them are very deadly inside the penalty box. Obviously, you know, maybe, maybe a little bit different in, in their size. Bessart is a little bit bigger, taller, stronger. Uh, but Jamie has got his qualities inside a penalty box. He can find the space. He's so smart. His 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 runs are intelligent. You know, so he is uh, always where he he needs to be. And maybe Bessard, because of his uh, physicality, didn't need to always be in the right space. But you know, he would make those runs in front of defenders and. A lot of goals he scored was right in front of defenders, you know. But that that was the way with with, with Brisbane. That uh, was a deliberate way of, of you know how to use him. Uh, with Jamie, obviously, we have got different ways to uh, provide him with with goal scoring opportunities, and uh, you know both of them are equally deadly. You've got a couple of tough games coming up. You've obviously got Western United tomorrow, and then uh, next week you travel up to my neck of the woods. You've got the game against Western Sydney. Um, they're right on your heels, four points back. How important 
is it to create that separation between yourselves and Western Sydney and the Central Coast Mariners? And yeah, look, I mean, uh, <clears throat> my my first game was against Sydney FC, and then. Uh, we had Melbourne Derby. We, we played again uh, against the Central Coast Mariners. Now now against uh, uh, Wellington. So so the games every game is hard. Uh, being city, uh, everyone wants to beat you. Being top of the table, everyone wants to beat you. It's a it's a game where you know everyone gives much more than maybe what they usually usually give. So, you know, from that point of view, the, the, our future games will be the same. Uh, what we need to concentrate is our own performance, uh, nothing else. You know, how are we going to press, how are we going to build up, how are we going to create chances. You know, we, we need to concentrate on all our principles. And if we play to the best of our ability, then, you know, games will be much, much easier. Uh, you know, l last week or last game, we managed to score three goals, which is fantastic. Um, you know, we conceded and we came, we came back from you know being one nil down away, which was again remarkable. Um, and and you know, the players' uh, uh, togetherness, the, the players' uh, emotional uh, uh, level was was fantastic. You know, throughout the game, and uh, uh, you know, th th I think that was one of the of the main reason why we, we were so successful um, and uh, obviously if we can maintain that then there would be no fear from anyone you know we, we are who we are and we play the way we want to play uh, and it's up to others to adjust to the way we are playing. Time for one or two more guys and we'll let Ryan get out to training. And, and I guess one of the ways that you're doing that is by scoring goals. You've got the most goals in the uh, like as a team. You've got tied most uh, for 19. You've got the best goal difference. I'm uh, sorry, um, tied second most with 19 goals scored. Best goal difference in the league. I guess how much of a key are players like Jamie, like Marco, to um, to being able to execute that? I mean, look. If if you look at the, uh, our last game in, in Wellington, we had the Tilio who crossed for the first goal. Uh, there was a penalty on Tilio for the second goal. Uh, you have Jamie who scored two goals. You have uh, Lecky who scored a beautiful header, uh, hit the post. And then uh, Andy, he, he created the, the third goal. So uh, all our players in, in front line had an impact. You know, is it is it creating or is it scoring? So you know, I think that is very important that they are all confident, they are all feeling good about themselves. That emotional side, and I'm talking about, you know, it, it, it helps when you are doing things that you know you are supposed to do, like scoring goals, creating goals, uh, assisting for the goals. And at the moment, you know, they are firing on all cylinders and, and I think that, that is the, the strength of the squad. Um, you know, it would be good if we can get a little bit more contribution from our midfielders, but it's something that we are working on. Um, and then if, uh, you know, that happens, then, you know, it's going to be even more deadly in, in front of the goal. Well, uh, just quickly, Western United, um, they're unbeaten in three, one goal conceded in three. Um, Alexander Prijevic is back and scoring goals and looking dangerous. What do you need to do to get a result against them? Well, there was a. It's a very good uh, uh, stats that uh, you know came since uh, Prijevic came back. Like before Prijevic uh, came back, uh, I think they were second last in crossing the ball into the penalty box, on I think seventeen percent. Since Prijevic came back. It is more like 40 something percent of the entries into the penalty box are from crosses. Um, which is a very big element in their build up. You know, a lot of times if they're under pressure, they just uh, play this long ball to Pirovic. He holds the ball, he brings in midfielders into play. So he has been very important part of, of you know, their attacking side of it. So we, we need to be extremely careful, extremely smart our decision making, how to mark him inside a penalty box, um, how to mark him uh, on the halfway line, you know, in, in, a, in a pressing moments. It's very important. Uh, and if we do what we are 
hoping that we can do it, then, then we can nullify him. But nevertheless, he is extremely dangerous player. And, uh, you know, when, when he is on, uh, on top of his game, he can bring all these other players into the game. And, you know, you can see that now they are not conceding any more goals. Uh, you know, they are much more cohesive. They are much better organized going forward. Um, and, and that's, you know, obviously with Diamante coming back in as well. Uh, James Tracy has been excellent for them. Lacroix now is coming back, so you know they, they are looking more and more stable. Uh, so it's going to be a great game. I can't wait for tomorrow night.